Hello. This is Andreen, Jewish American Priestess. And I am coming to you today with another Hebrew reading. And we have some newer viewers on this channel, so I want to just say real quickly um, about the Hebrews. They are a divination technique which um, is based on Hebrew letters. The Hebrew letters all have a bunch of different um, meanings and symbols that are sometimes affiliated with the tarot. And um, I have come up with my own conjunctions as to how they are connected with or affiliated with tarot cards. Um, the set of Hebrews that I am, and call them Hebrews because they are Hebrew, but they're like Nordic runes. So the set of Hebrews that I'm using today uh, are wood burned Hebrews. And on one side, they have the Hebrew letter. And on the other side, they have the proto or paleo Hebrew letter. So these are the very ancient symbols that were precursors to the modern Hebrew. So those are the letters that I'm using today. These are um, uh, myrtle wood, and I did a wood burning technique to put the letters on either side of these. Uh, and I'm going to be using some tarot cards as well. And these particular cards are a deck called the Mythologia Fenica Tarot. And they are based on the ancient stories of the Finnish people, the Finno-Ugric people. So it's a different language group than the Norse. It's not runes per se, but they call, because it is that part of the world, they call the stories runes. So these are the stories of the, the Finnish people, and they are um, loosely affiliated with the traditional tarot. So I'm going to start out today by pulling out just two cards today, because these stories are very interesting, and I'm going to tell them, and I don't want to um, uh, put out so many cards that it's difficult for us to talk about the stories that are affiliated with them as well. So let's start with getting out two tarot cards from the Mythologia Fenica tarot deck. one and there's two okay let's take a look at what we have today this one flipped over and it is the wolf's bride that's a fascinating story which i will tell you about in a moment and here we have lemminkainen and we've seen him before but he really wants to come out today it looks interesting the color scheme today too we have the red and black and the red and gray and white today. So I would like you to, I'm not going to go into the stories so much in this introduction, but I will go into the stories in each of the readings. So, and I'm also going to take two crystals and match them up with our cards here today. And I'm going to go with for the Wolf's Bride, I'm going to take this Bloodstone Jasper. It reminds me of that with the red. And for Lemminkainen, I'm going to go all the way up to the top and get the clear crystal quartz. So the two opposite ends of the spectrum here. So take a moment, decide which of these cards is calling to you today, and uh, I will put the timestamps below in those comments, and you can just follow those timestamps, click on them, and they will take you directly to your reading. And I will see you there. Okay, friends, so this card, The Wolf's Bride, is a story from a Finnish author that is the story about a woman who was, I guess in English you would call her a werewolf. 
she was uh, so drawn to go out and join her pack in the forest that she would leave her husband and her child to go running with and care for her wolf pack. It, was a, it wasn't an easy choice for her, but it was a choice that she made because she couldn't stop herself from choosing it. <clears throat> you can see that it is corresponding to the Seven of Wands in the traditional tarot, which traditionally is a card of defending what is important to you. And you can see here in the background, there's some wolf-looking characters. Um, she chose her wolf family over her human family because she couldn't not. It was in her nature. And uh, she had no shame about that. She eventually ended up leaving her family and running off with the wolves. And the story goes on to say that eventually she was burned at the stake as a werewolf. But she had no shame. She had no... Um, she had no regrets about that because she needed to do what she needed to do. And I'm going to own the fact that this stone, which I initially called a bloodstone, um, I, I picked it because it reminded me of blood and this card has got a lot of red in it. But I'm thinking it, it, it must be a piece of jasper of some sort, uh, possibly an agate the dark red agate it's it's very hard for me to identify what it actually is but it is this dark red stone that reminds me of blood so i'm going to just call it a red blood jasper so here it is the wolf the wolf's bride and she is teaching us that it is okay to be who we are regardless of the consequences sometimes uh people don't like who we are people don't uh don't appreciate us for what we are and we need to own that, even if it means taking a risk. Uh, we need to follow our own path in life, even if other people don't approve of it. That we have the courage to stand up for what it means to be who we are and not be tied down by what the community or society wants us to be. So that is... Uh, our story of the wolf's bride. So I'm going to set her off to the side here and maybe I'll do some lighting changes so we can continue to see her better. All right, so we're going to take out uh, some of these Hebrons today. Since our wolf likes to run in the forest, I'll take some wood Hebrons. I'm going to shuffle them up. It's going to be a little bit loud for you. So if you're wearing a headset or you need to sh close your ears, do that. And I'm going to pull out uh, a handful. I'm not going to count. I'm just going to pull them out and see what comes out. Wow, we've got a couple on edge today. I'm going to talk, just knock them over. Okay, wow. Is that right? We have almost all in the Paleo Hebrew today, so that's very interesting. Something very ancient about this story, about uh, owning who you are and being okay with that. All right, I'm going to turn them in, in um, into the fashion where they look appear upright to me. So that it's a little easier for me to read them. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to start from the left and go to the right. So up at the very top here, we have the, the mem. So in the traditional Hebrew these days, it looks like this, but we've got the Paleo Hebrew, and it's looking like waves of water. And the Mem is the word uh, Mayim Hayim. It's the, it's the waters of life. It's one of the mother letters of Hebrew, and it is the letter that corresponds to the creation element of water, which is the stuff from which we all have been born. Uh, primordially, we have the water below and the waters above and the separation between those. And the mem itself is the number 40 in Gematria, which corresponds to 40 weeks of gestation in the body. So there's been some gestation for you uh, that has been beneficial in the near past. And 
it has brought you to where you are. There's been some sort of creation that you have possibly been working on. The mem is, uh, it is the letter that corresponds to fullness. So we just passed through the fullness of the moon, which is great because we've got the wolf here and she's a werewolf. So she's looking up at the moon here. There's been the fullness of the moon and we are now waning toward the new moon again. Um, but it's about cleansing. Um, the waters are about cleansing and transformation. And I love that also in conjunction to the wolf's bride here because she transformed regularly into a wolf. So it's about transformation and the, and the, and the fullness of time, about gestation and pregnancy. It's about cleansing and finding out who you really are once you have washed off all that part of you that does not connect with you. It corresponds to the winter, which is the time of year where I am in, in the northern hemisphere. The wet, cold time where the flooding is happening and there is flooding happening in the world. So it, it's, it's about things that happened recently, like just, just recently now, and some kind of gestation and possibly also emotions. Like, so it, it's got an undercurrent to it because it is water, but it can have to do with tears, um, expressing oneself also. But because it is above, because it's on the upper part of the reading, I'm going to read it as, even if there have been tears, they have been important tears. The same way with this story, that although it was challenging for the wolf's bride to to accept her own inner nature. It was more important to do that than to succumb to what society had pressured her to do. So she uh, did run off and, and she had to leave her family, her human family, which must have been painful on some level, but the, but the rewards outweighed the difficulties. So there's some kind of grief possibly that's come along with this, but it's but it's a good grief, one that, that tra helps us to transform into where we need to be. Yeah, the, the mem corresponds to the creation element of water, as I said, but it's like the deep, like that primordial water, uh, the, the amniotic fluid, certainly of birth, but also like just what's below everything, like the deep, the, the tahom, they call it tahom in Hebrew. That's the under... Uh, the undercurrent that is under everything, out of which everything is born. For me, this um, letter, the mem, corresponds to the tarot card of the high priestess, who is the supernal mother, the mystery. And she has this connection with the moon as well. So I think that's wonderful in conjunction with the wolf card here. We've got this werewolf looking up at the moon, but also this transformation that takes place and the mystery of that transformation. So that's what's come right before. And what I'm seeing in the center here of our situation is the letter pay. And the letter pay, this is the Paleo Hebrew. It looks like a mouth. Um, in the traditional Hebrew, you can see it sort of looks like a, a mouth speaking. And in the Paleo or Proto-Hebrew, it looks like a long, narrow mouth, maybe a, some lips here. And it looks like a willow leaf, which is the plant that is included in the traditional lulav, which is a object, a ritual object we shake to bring about the rain at this time of year. And it's supposed to represent the mouth in the body. So the, the letter pay is the letter that corresponds to the mouth of the divine speaking creation into existence. So it's another sort of creation uh, letter, but it's about speech and speaking what is true, speaking what is authentic. The letter pay corresponds to the number 80 and the number 80 is the ultimate manifestation of the infinite because the number eight corresponds to infinity because on its side, you'll see it looks like an infinity symbol. And it is also one more than seven, 
seven being the number of days of creation. So it's this magical number that means the infinite. What happens after we finish creating? Uh, what happens after we finish creating? The infinite is what happens. And yet, it is this, it is this ultimate manifestation of creation where we speak and where we can speak our truth in order to create because that is how we manifest in the world. We say what we want to have happen out loud or to the universe or in writing, and that's how things come into being. And that's what's going on right now. We have this, this uh, calling to, to speak our truth, to create what we want to see in the world. And that is our central issue here. How do we speak uh, goodness into the world? How do we speak the good that we'd like to see in the world? How do we imagine it will look? And how do we bring it into being through our voice? The letter pay corresponds to the binary foundation of grace and ugliness. So it's, it's, it, it, as it corresponds to this wolf's bride card, I see her as as far as the humans are concerned, was she beautiful when she was a wolf? Or was she ugly as a wolf? I mean, we get to decide what is beautiful and what is ugly in the world. For her, the wolves were beautiful, and that's where she had to be. And for society, maybe the humans are beautiful and the wolf is not. So we need to make that determination, what is beautiful and what is less so. And how do we make that determination? By speaking our truth with our mouths, uh, speaking, speaking what is true for us and not being concerned what other people think. We have to decide what we decide is beautiful and how do we make that manifest in the world. The next letter I'm seeing in our spread here is the Paleo Hebrew for the letter Shin. And Shin is another mother letter of creation. It is the mother letter of fire. In the current Hebrew, you can see it looks like flames licking up from the bottom here. And it is the element that corresponds to all the fires in the sky. So the sun, the moon, and the stars. And I love that again because we have this wolf and the moon uh, is what drew her out into her manifestation of becoming the wolf self of her. And so we have the wolf. And it's also, uh, interestingly, the letter that corresponds to the term that is for, the, for teeth. Um, so, and wolves are, you know, well known for having sharp teeth. So shine is the word in Hebrew for teeth. And you can see it kind of looks like a couple of front teeth here. So we have this that is helping us, the fire. Uh, and fire is also a cleansing element. It's something that we use to cleanse and burn off dross. We burn off what is no longer necessary. And ironically, or maybe appropriately, the wolf's bride was burned at the stake for being who she was. But she had no shame and she had no uh, regrets about that because it was more important to be who she was than to conform. And so in your story, and I don't know what your story is because this is a general reading, but in your story, maybe there's some something that you need to let go of, some part of your story that you need to, to release, to burn off and transform like a, like a phoenix that is then born out of the ashes. Uh, after something is burned up, you can find the beauty uh, for the new growth that comes. And, and we have a bunch of stories in the, in the Kalevala deck about um, how like the plants wouldn't grow until the fields were burned. That's a very common agricultural technique from the ancient times of the slash and burn. You would cut down everything that was there and then set the field on fire. And those nutrients would nourish the soil. So I love that we've got fire here as another element that is helping us to uh, become who we need to be, burning off what it is that is no longer serving us at this time. The next letter down below here, we have the letter Nun, and this is the, um, the current Hebrew letter for the letter Nun. In the paleo, it looked like this. 
but the current letter is a kneeling bowed head person who is becoming humble or experiencing humility and the letter noon is the letter that corresponds to humility or service or loyalty it can be loyalty uh, as well as mm, I want to say service but not slavery however because this is low in our reading it could be that what isn't helping right now is being a slave to whatever it is that is not serving you because we're talking about being true to yourself um, not being enslaved to what other people think the noon is the letter that corresponds to the stomach in the body so if you've been having any issues with stomach or like feeling sick to your stomach or feeling like you've been punched in the stomach because you've been asked to, to conform in some way that isn't serving you uh, that's that's absolutely uh, working in this reading right now with that um, I get you know I'm feeling it in my stomach right now just even as I'm speaking about it that there's been something some kind of gut punch that has come it can also you know it's interesting it also can have to do with abundance um, in the Aramaic the word noon means fish which is an abundant symbol but it also can be uh, somebody who is a bar nafli, which is somebody who has fallen. And that's also a term that's used for a miscarriage. So I find that really interesting in, in light of this, because we've got the birth up here at the top with the water. But something down here at the bottom that has been either a fear, uh, that there's a fear that there will be a fall that happens, or, or a miscarriage of some gestation of some sort either an idea or a project that maybe there's some fear around losing that or becoming enslaved to it so the nun again I, I don't I don't I want to say that it's it's about humility and being appropriately humble but since it's on the lower line there's maybe a danger of being humiliated here like people tried to shame the wolf's bride for for being who she was but she chose not to accept that shame she chose to be who she was and not get tied up into other people's ideas about things so be true to yourself I think is what it's saying and don't be humiliated by what other people think you ought to be yeah, in regards to this reading, that seems how it is. You know, use your use your voice to speak your truth, and uh, use your teeth and your fire to break th through whatever you need to break through, so that you don't get trapped here in being something inauthentic. And that will bring us to the race. And this is it's, it looks like a little head because it's supposed to race looks like this in the traditional Hebrew these days. But in the Paleo Hebrew, it looked actually like a head because Resh is the first letter of the word Rosh. And it means beginning. It means like in, in the first word of the Torah, the first word that is spoken in Torah is Bereshit. It means in the beginning. And Resh is the binary foundation of seed and barrenness. And it's on our path line. So that means there's a seed coming. There is some new beginning that's coming. After all of this, uh, after all of this mishigas, after all of this kerfuffle of what have we got here? We've got a wolf, a woman who is actually a wolf, and she has to go off to be with the wolves in order to feel satisfied in her life. We've had a gestation that's come just right before then. It's been really positive, a cleansing of some sort. Right now we're speaking our truth into the world burning off whatever isn't serving us maybe biting through our bonds to become free and not choosing to not become a slave choosing to not be humiliated by our situation and out of that we will come up with a new beginning and a new start uh, that is coming very soon 
I think it's coming very soon for all of you who are here watching this today, whenever this finds you. So for those of you who chose the Wolf's Bride and the Jasper, the Blood Jasper, we'll call it, um, this has been your reading for today. I hope it's been helpful for you. I hope that you'll like and subscribe, and I will see you here in the future. Okay, for those of you who chose Lemminkainen, um, this is the card that corresponds to the traditional tarot card of strength. Uh, I question that because he has a lot of flaws. Um, Lemminkainen is one of the heroes of the Kalevala, the Finnish um, runes, stories of the Finnish people. And he's one of three brothers, is my understanding. Um, there was Vainamoinen, uh, Ilmarinen, and Lemminkainen. And he was the, the good-looking kind of Don Juan character. He had all the ladies. He was always running off to do adventure. He was very, um, he was very ardent about everything he did, but sometimes rather misguided in his, uh, in his way. He did marry, but he ended up um, being unfaithful, as did his bride. And then he had was cast into the river of Tuonela, which is the dark black river of death, uh, when he tried to complete a task that was beyond his capacity. He was chopped into bits, and his mother had to come rescue him and try to revive him. So he's got a, a lot of questionable things. He... he you know, as, as ardent, he's very, very excited about doing things and rushing off to do stuff, but he is sometimes making questionable choices, let's just say. He really, he really does have a good heart, but he, he, he isn't very patient, uh, and so he just, like, rushes forward to do things. He's kind of bold, and, um, I don't know what the, how that corresponds to what's going on in your life right now, but maybe there's some something that's coming up for you. I'm just going to listen in for a second. Yeah, maybe there's something that's coming up for you that you're rushing forward toward uh, without considering all the consequences of your actions. And uh, it might be good to to get a little clarity before you go rushing forth full force. Uh, so you don't end up in the river of Tuonela. So, uh, and so that's why I chose for you the clear quartz, uh, the clear, clear quartz crystal, which is about clarity. It's about clarity of mind, clarity of thought, um, maybe having a connection to uh, the divine. So let's uh, let's add some clarity to poor Lemminkainen's um, ardent heart and it, and lust for adventure, etc. Just set this over to the side. And then today I'm going to pull out some Hebrews from this set of uh, Myrtle runes. And they have both the Paleo and the traditional Hebrew or the modern Hebrew on them. So I'm just going to reach into the bowl. I'm going to stir them up. It might be a little bit loud, so cover your ears or turn your volume down if that's going to bother you. And then I will toss some down on the table and we'll see what our reading says today. Turn these so that I can see what direction they are traditionally read. And we're just going to go from left to right and read and see what, see what we have to see today. So in our first letter, in the upper left corner, I'm seeing the letter Dalit. And Dalit is a doorway. It is a gate through which we might travel or a liminal space that we're passing through. And since this is an, on the upper level of the reading and a little bit to the left, I'm going to count that as something that's just come before. There's something that's just passed by recently that is some kind of 
transition that you've gone through, some kind of doorway or gate that you have passed through and uh, a threshold of some kind. Uh, it could be as simple as we just went into a new year. And so we've, we've made this transition, whatever it is, and we're moving forward. Um, Dalit also has the correspondence of a binary transformation of wisdom and foolishness, which is perfect for Lemminkainen because he doesn't, he doesn't always use his best wisdom when he moves forward. So we have to determine where we are on that continuum between wisdom and foolishness. Where are we as we walk through that transition between wisdom and foolishness? You may have just heard my chime go off. I have a random chime that sounds uh, for me throughout the day to remind me that the divine is here. And I, I love that in terms of the doorway because the divine is always there when we walk through the doorway. Those of us who practice Judaism often have a mezuzah on our doorway. You'll see them in Jewish homes a lot of times. You touch and kiss it as you walk through the doorway to remind you as you go through those transitions that the divine is here. And that is one of the ways that we keep on track with being more wise and being less foolish as we make transitions. Dalit also corresponds to the idea of humility. Um, Dal means poor and humble, so it relates to humility and humbleness. So as we've passed through this transition, have we been appropriately humble so that we can have the wisdom to move forward with humility rather than just rushing through as Lemminkainen might and uh, making foolish decisions? The letter Dalit is the first letter of the name David, which is the king of Israel, who was a very famous king, King David, David Melech, Israel. He came from very humble beginnings and he became king. He returned to humility, let's say, after making some questionable decisions, because he was also a, an interesting a warrior and a, and a kind of a brash character that sometimes had some poor behavior and questionable decisions, but he eventually returned to humility. So Dalit can also remind us of King David. The letter Dalit is the number four in Gamatria. So it has to do with these, these um, multiples of four. So we have the four directions, north, south, east, and west. We have the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. We have, we have four uh, elements, air, fire, water, and earth. And there are four letters to the name of the divine. So all of those correspondences also tie into the letter Dalit. And the four parts of a door, you've got the, you know, the top and two sides and then the bottom. Um, in this depiction, we only have the top and one side, but there is this doorway. There is this doorway through which we have recently passed. For me, in my intuitive readings of how the Hebrews correspond with the traditional tarot cards, Dalit corresponds to the death card. And that's because death is, is a big transition. It's the ultimate transition. When you see the death card in the tarot, um, a lot of times people are frightened because they think it means a literal death. And it, 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 but it means a transformation, some major transformation that's happened. So having the Dalit here at the beginning of your reading, at the top of your reading, means that some transformation, some transition has happened and that it's positive, that it's good. Even if it seems challenging, it is a very positive transition that's happened. Moving on to the next letter, we have this little guy. And you can see he corresponds to the letter hey. It's like standing there saying hey. Um, the letter hey in Hebrew, you can see it looks a lot like a dalit with a leg. Um, it's somebody who is standing, present. The word hineni begins with the letter hey. Hineni means here I am. I'm here and present and ready for service. And Lemon kind of had that in spades. I'll do whatever. I'm just going to run off and do that. But, but 
but the hey is really about being present and staying present, not just hearing one message and tearing off with that one message, but continuing to listen and being present for divine service, however that looks. And it will change over time. Everything changes. So for those of you who are having just come through this doorway, now is the time where we are here. We're saying, here I am. I'm ready for whatever is coming next. And just remaining present and not tearing off to do the next thing. And that's uh, emulated also by this letter, which is the letter bait. This is the paleo. It looks like a floor plan of a house because it's a house. The letter bait corresponds to home, bait. And bait is, is the letter that rules over the day Shabbat in the week. Shabbat is the place of rest. It's when we sit at home and just rest. And so with both of the hay and the bait here, it's saying to me, right now, in this central time in your reading, is a good time to sit still in your home and not tear off to the next thing. You know, find the wisdom from that binary foundation of wisdom and foolishness and move into a place of stillness. Remain present. Don't make any big plans right now. They say that hay is the foundation of sight. It's the foundation of, of light. The, the letter hay is the number five in Gematria, and the word light is mentioned five times in the creation story. And it is the foundation of sight. So being able to see clearly, as I said, getting some clarity from this, this quartz crystal, um, it's time to sit and get clarity, to be present, to be available, be willing to serve, but not tearing off and doing something without getting clarity first. The letter Hay makes up two letters of the four-letter name of the divine. We mentioned the number four here, the four letters of the divine. That word is spelled yud Hey vav Hey. So we have two of those letters in the letter Hey, which is to say that's half of the name of the divine. And I like to say that being present, showing up, is half of divinity. If you can remain present, you're halfway to divinity. Because that's, that's what it's all about, staying where you are and not rushing off to a new thing. It is about time as well in that the word uh, that makes up the divine name, which is unpronounceable, the yod heh vav -Heh, if you if you look at the an anagram of that, you get Havaya, and it means beingness. It's it's about all these different time sen tenses. Ha Haya means past. Hove means present. Yehia means future. And all of those things make up the divine name. Two letters of which is the letter He. Interestingly, the letter He rules over the constellation Aries. Uh, which is happens in the spring, um, but it's also affiliated with Mars, which is the planet over which Dalit rules. So something to do with Mars and Aries and the power that comes from those those that red planet and the fieriness of an Aries. Maybe that that strong headedness. Maybe I mean I can see Lemminkainen as an Aries just tearing off to do whatever. The letter He corresponds to the organ, the liver in the body, and it is the heaviest organ in the body. So it has this great amount of weight and gravitas to it, and it is the same root as the word for glory or honor in Hebrew. The word for liver is keved, and the root word for glory and honor is kevod, and it means that something has great weight and gravitas. So with the letter hey and the letter bait here, it's saying sit still, 
understand how important it is, what it is you're going to be doing here. Really consider and move forward with thought and mindfulness and wisdom. And the letter bait corresponds to the binary foundation of life and death, that transformation of life and death and, and the choices that we have every day. Are we going to choose life? Are we going to choose death? You know, Lemminkainen lived life and, and, and tore off into things that ended up dead. Uh, fortunately, he had a very loving mother who brought him back to life. But we don't all have that, those resources at our, at our disposal all the time. So we need to remember to choose life every day when we have that choice point come up for us. Choose to get up out of bed and do what needs to get done, but also be present while you do it. Those, those two letters being right next to each other, right on top of each other, really, really hits home how important it is to remain present and also choose life each day, every day. Rest when you need to. Take care of your home. Take care of your body. I love that also that we've, we've got the, the hay here that looks like a little guy. And bait, can, it corresponds to the home, but the home is the body of the soul. So take care of your body at this time too. Having just come through this, this transformation, this, this, this maybe metaphorical death, now is the time to take care of your body, be present, choose life. And when we get through that, what that brings us to is the olive. And olive is the first letter of the olive bet. It is the number one. And so it represents all things one, the oneness of the divine, the oneness of the universe. It represents the mother letter of air, the, the, the creation element of air, that where we live, we live in this beautiful zone between the fire and the earth, between the fire and the water. We live in a place where we can breathe. I see it as balance because we have a yud above and a yud below and a vav between. And that is like the divine and the heavens and the divine in the human on earth and this connection between and the division between as well. So there's this paradox of oneness and multiplicity. We have one divine and many, many infinite facets of the divine. We have one universe and trillions of stars. We have one body and trillions of cells. So coming into balance and, and understanding that balance between the manyness and the oneness of all things. The Aleph is coming back to the one. It's finding that balance between merit and guilt. Where do we, where do we sit between our good deeds and our bad deeds? It corresponds to the chest in the body and the lungs in the body and the breath in the body and the air and the atmosphere and the wind in the world. It's about the temperate season as well. So that's interesting because we have Mars and Aries and the springtime. So maybe something is coming up soon for you in the spring that will bring clarity. The other thing that Olaf reminds me is that it's got this crossroads, sort of this, you know, like there's this crossroads happening where transformation takes place at the crossroads. But it's a place where we get to choose which direction are we going to go now. We come through this doorway and we get to choose where we're going. A lot of transformation imagery that come up, like the snake shedding its skin, resting when it's not moving, standing in perfect stillness. The things that are neither this nor that, like, the, like a mushroom, which is neither an animal or a plant, but this mysterious third thing that takes multiple forms in multiple stages of life, serves as a conduit of communication between other life forms. And Aleph corresponds both to divinity and humanity in that it is the one letter that begins most of the names of God, Adonai, El Elohim, Eloha, Adon Olam, Avinu Malkeinu, Emet, meaning truth, Asherah, and also begins the word Adam, an Adama, which means earth, mud, human. In the Paleo-Hebrew, it looks like a cow. I can show you that. So it has to do with wealth and worth and, and ox and strength and leaders. 
all of that wrapped up in one letter. The, the correspondence I give to the Aleph in terms of the traditional tarot is the temperance card because it's all about balance, compromise, creating, combining, integration. So something is coming up in the future here about integration, about oneness, about finding your place with the one in the world. So you've just come through a doorway. Right now you're in this place of being present, being at home, taking care of your home. And soon you'll be coming into balance with the oneness of all, the oneness of the universe, the oneness of the divine. And so for those of you who chose Lemminkainen, finding your wisdom, not rushing ahead, finding clarity before we move forward. If you've been having a, a challenging time about distinguishing between wisdom and foolishness, be where you are. Be present. Remain present. Take care of yourself. And soon we'll be moving into a place of balance, temperance, finding our place in the oneness. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and I will see you here next time.